Here we have a small blue jellyfish full of hopes and dreams of becoming strong. Pretending they could bench press, her little friend has been given access to a means of gaining power. Now with further work, he will slowly but surely reach his dream of getting strong. As you can see, he's all grown up and has found his mate. Notice he's far larger than when we last saw him. And then all of a sudden, a child! Now then, fast forwarding time a bit, we see the child has grown up, but something's a bit off. It seems the child is marginally smaller than his father. Which leads us to analyzing the conflicting yet easily distinguished views of Lamarck and Darwin. Lamarck, an interesting individual who believed in the concept of use and disuse. Lamarck thought that if an organism were to use a part more, it would gradually get stronger and unused parts weaker. These would all be potentially passed on even when newly acquired in the animal's lifetime. This, of course, is a more generally disproved idea, an early example of its doubts being an August Wiseman's experiment where he took the tails of rats and cut them off, showing the offspring at tails as proving the passing on of newly acquired traits. Darwin Darwin was able to smoothly organize his ideas into four principles which all played into a single idea of natural selection amongst all individuals of a species. The first principle being variability, an example you can see with these varied assortments of jellyfish. Notice all of the possible combinations. Now to have variability is one thing, but in order for it to be a part of natural selection, the variants must be heritable, meaning it's part of our genes that get passed on through reproduction. For our third principle, competition, it states that more offspring are made than the environment can hold, making it so offspring compete for limited resources. For the final principle, the environment must have a pressure in which certain expressions of genes are favorable, and thus, they are most likely passed on to the next generation via the increased fitness they give. For a visual sum up of all principles, we have a small bacteria experiment, where the small variations allow for outcompeting those who can't handle the pressure, and these pressures leading to the passing of those better fitting genes. The largest thing to take away from this would have to be that we at some point diverge from a common ancestor, with the play of all of Darwin's principles setting everything as we know it up to this point of time.